That's a 2020 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, the most capable and arguably coolest looking 4Runner you can get from the dealer new. And I happen to think it's quite a bit like the Dodge Charger and Challenger. How's that? Well, like those cars, this 4Runner has been around a long time. This generation was introduced in 2010, and despite that, it's never been as popular as it is now. How does that make sense? Well, like the Charger and Challenger, the 4Runner's been the same while the world has changed around it. Today, if you want a mid-size SUV with a body-on-frame construction and a real two-speed transfer case, clearances that make for you know, capability when going off-road, and also enough comfort to drive to work every day, your options are fairly limited. So if you're looking at one of these vehicles, in this video, we're gonna explain what you're signing up for, both good and bad, and what the competition may be doing better or worse. Be aware though, we're filming this before the reveal of the Ford Bronco, and by the time this video goes live, the world may be a very different place again. But that's a problem for future us. Uh, for the time being, we're just gonna enjoy the Foreigner in this beautiful location. As always, hit the links below to visit Edmunds to learn more about these vehicles and find your next perfect car. And then like, comment, and subscribe to this channel to see more videos like this one. The TRD Pro starts at just underneath $50,000, and that kind of money gets you a fully loaded Kia Telluride, which is Edmunds' top-ranked midsize SUV. It's the one we recommend to most shoppers, so why wouldn't you buy it? Well, if your lifestyle just demands commuting and you want just more style than toughness in the way your SUV looks, you should probably get the Telluride. Why would you get the 4Runner then? Well, if your lifestyle demands a bit more adventure, if you go camping regularly, if you actually need to use some of the four-wheel drive capability that the 4Runner comes with. We mentioned some of that in the intro, but the 4Runner has hardware that a lot of SUVs these days don't deliver, at least they don't in the same combination. You see, 4Runners like the TRD Off-Road and this TRD Pro get real off-road hardware, like a four-wheel drive system, a real four-wheel drive system, a two-speed transfer case that gives you a low range, and a locking rear differential you can activate with the push of a button. So the TRD Pro in particular gets upgraded shocks and springs. They're Fox shocks, and actually the rears are a remote reservoir, which is pretty cool. And you also get a, a little bit of a lift as well. So that combination is gonna give you extra control, extra durability, and extra clearance that's important for off-road driving. Now the wheels and tires themselves, the wheels are 17 inches in diameter, seven inches wide, and they're wrapped in 32 inch Nito Terra Grappla tires. And that's a tire that's attempting to mix the best of on-road comfort, wet weather traction, and off-road road traction. If you want to do more serious off-roading, you're going to need a more serious off-road tire that's going to be worse at on-road comfort. And then we also have to call out at the front that TRD skid plate. It's aluminum, it's a quarter inch thick, but most importantly, it has TRD in bright red. Looks cool. Interestingly, the TRD Pro is unavailable with Toyota's Trick KDSS anti-roll bar system, and that option is available on the less expensive TRD off-road. What is it and why would you want KDSS or not? Well, when you get the system, it, your 4Runner comes with beefier anti-roll bars and that's gonna improve on-road refinement and comfort. But when you go off-road, the system recognizes that and mechanically removes the anti-roll bars from the equation, improving articulation. Now, if you're gonna keep your 4Runner stock, it's a decent system to have because of the benefits it offers. Just know that if you do plan on modifying it and putting on a lift kit or bigger wheels and tires, the complexity of that system is gonna get in the way. The complexity of that system is also gonna make maintenance and repairs more expensive, as one of our video team members can personally attest to with his 4Runner. Come on. <laughs> Let's talk about the engine and transmission because that's really where the 4Runner begins to show its age. The engine's a 4-liter V6 with 270 horsepower and 276 pound-feet of torque, and that's adequate by today's standards. The real issue is the transmission is a five-speed automatic. And with only five forward gears, you don't get the ratio spread or the advantages of a ratio spread that a modern transmission offers. And that includes things like a shorter first gear for a better crawl ratio and then taller top gears for better fuel economy. And also the number of gears in between those, uh, when you have more of them, the downshifts are less pronounced and that's nicer to drive. This thing on the freeway, maintaining 70 miles an hour in hilly terrain is always bouncing between fifth and fourth, and that can be pretty annoying. As for fuel economy, the 4Runner TRD Pro is rated at 17 MPG combined, and that's just not good. I mean, you get that out of a V8 full-size pickup these days. But at least you get to run 87 octane, so gas will be cheap. 
Now let's talk about the interior. Due to the age of the generation of this Forerunner, things are gonna appear dated, though everything remains functional. And when I say appear dated, I mean things like you're not gonna find a USB-C port in here. You will find you know, one USB port in the front, but it's an older style, and you'll still find 12 volt power ports throughout. Now, new for 2020, Toyota added a couple things that are welcome additions to the Forerunner. One is a suite of advanced driver aids and safety features like adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, and you know pedestrian warning, and those things are pretty helpful. But crucially, the big addition for this year is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in the entertainment system. Praise the Lord, this is such a welcome addition to have. It actually makes me want to consider one of these things. Now, other details that uh, stick out in the Forerunner that you may not have in other vehicles, uh, a manually engageable, or at least a lever to engage low range, still feels cool. And probably the biggest Forerunner advantage in the entire automotive industry is the fact that you can make the rear window go up and down with this guy right here. Of course, the question with any modern car interior is, what do you do with Arnie? Well, because we only have wired Apple CarPlay, you gotta plug Arnie in or leash Arnie up. The first solution looks like this pocket right here, but as you see, Arnie's a little too big. And when you accelerate, Arnie goes flying out and he hasn't really flown since Commando, so we're not gonna ask that much more from him. The next obvious solution is this pocket right here, but again, Arnie's a little too big, so he sticks out and kind of interferes with that cup holder. So you could tilt him up and he's still gonna jostle around and dance, and we all know that you know Van Damme was the dancer of that era. So our last option is really to tuck Arnie away back in here and use this little pass-through for the wire, and now the Arnie is contained. The rear storage of the Forerunner might be its biggest advantage versus vehicles like the Grand Cherokee and the Wrangler uh, because of how much storage space you have. There's just a lot back here. Now there isn't anything back here that's specific to the TRD Pro. This is what you find in most Forerunners aside from this optional shelf, but let's talk about that. What that shelf seems to do is help you mitigate the depth of this load area because you can pull it out like this. This is optional and the guy on staff who has one of these in his corner that he's had for years says he's used it maybe twice so whether it's worth it is up to you. Now other things I like about this rear storage area are the power outlets in the rear and the fact that the second row folds flat. It's a little cumbersome to do so you have to hit like three different switches to fold it but once you do it's nice and flat that makes it easier to put stuff in but also you get a little barrier between the front seats and the rear seats and that's nice. The Forerunner has a number of electronic aids to help you with off-road driving, and I'm going to turn the multi-terrain select right now, which is going to give me a couple different drive modes to choose from. I'm going to put it in sand, because that's where we're in, but you have options like rocks and moguls. Now what that does is it tells the stability control system the type of driving I want to do, and the stability control system supposedly reacts accordingly. Because there are situations when you're off-road that you want some tire slip, like when you're driving in sand, like I am right now, and there are times when you don't, like when you're driving on rocks. This is gonna be a really light off-road area. It's more of just like a wash that we can get some decent speed in and talk about the driving experience. I'll say on a road, this Forerunner feels rougher than your typical family SUV. And that's because of the hardware it has that allows it to do this kind of thing. It's not bad though. And plus I think it's kind of cool driving to work with something that looks like it's built to do something else. There's a toughness to this, especially when you have it caked with dirt like ours presumably is right now. But let's talk about the off-road driving experience. I'm able to maintain some pretty decent speed, say you know, 40 miles an hour or so through the swash, which is pretty quick. And I gotta say the stability control system is doing a pretty good job uh, keeping the wheels uh, the direction that I want them to go, keeping the vehicle pointed in the direction I want it to go, which works out pretty nice. Now, there are more capable off-roaders that you can get new from the dealership than the Forerunner. Certainly, the Jeep Wrangler is the best example. There's nothing on the market out there that can match what the Wrangler Rubicon can deliver. It's a smaller, more nimble vehicle that has superior hardware, especially the uh, solid front axle, which has better articulation. The fact that you can get electronically disconnecting front anti-roll bar, that the front differential locks, that's all superior stuff. But there are some reasons why you might want to choose the Forerunner. Uh, specifically, it's bigger inside. It is more cargo volume. It's also, in my mind, a little bit nicer to drive daily, with the exception of the five-speed automatic. The Wrangler's got an eight-speed with its V6. That is, uh, I wish I would have in this Forerunner. But the solid front axle on the Wrangler makes for steering behavior that feels a little bit loose, and the Forerunner is much tighter and more nice, and drives a bit more nicely. 
And this is pretty fun, I gotta admit. Of course, bombing down a dirt road is always gonna be fun. <laughs> the only thing I'll call out is uh, on top of the five-speed automatic, the TRD Pro comes with a cat-back exhaust that emphasizes some of the least desirable elements of the V6 engine, uh, especially this one. Now, it's nice when you step on the gas and get to accelerate through an entire gear. That sounds good, but when you're on the freeway or when you just have the engine you know, parked somewhere between 1,000 and 3,000 RPM, it just drones and doesn't sound nice. If this were my SUV, I'd get the stock exhaust on it because I don't want to hear that drone it's not not very good but now that we've covered that and had our fun driving fast let's slow it down and climb a modestly steep hill and see how this thing works Forerunners have a couple different drive modes for off-road and there's one that's like a quasi hill climb low speed off-road cruise control that I'm gonna engage now. In order to do that, we have to be in four low, which we are in, and we also have to be in drive, and I'm actually gonna choose first gear with the shifter here. And then I'm gonna engage it by hitting this button to turn the system on, and then I have crawl control enabled. I can dial the speed to five different settings by using this dial, and let's give that a try. So I've got it at the lowest setting right now, and I might turn it up a little bit as we approach this hill. And what's nice about this is the system is going to do all the application of torque and brakes by itself for maximum traction. So I have my foot off the gas pedal and I'm hovering the brake as I approach this hill. It's, it's kind of slightly unnerving to hear the ABS clicking away like it is, but in terms of traction, this is working great. Very smooth once it gets moving. And just like that, we made it to the top. All I had to do was steer, and the 4Runner did the rest with uh, acceleration and braking. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So while the 4Runner has some dated parts and a couple of downsides that come along with it, there's nothing quite like it, again, until that Bronco comes out. Wrangler, Jeep Wrangler offers superior off-road performance, but is smaller and may not be as nice to drive during the daily commute due to increased interior noise and uh, the steering that you get out of a solid front axle. Now on the other extreme, you have the Kia Telluride, which is much nicer to drive day by day, but can't do this at all. And so that leaves the 4Runner in a kind of unique position that it's fallen into simply because of how long it's been out for sale. Uh, and this TRD Pro specifically serves as an example of what you can do. And that makes it appealing. And it's also a really nice turnkey product that you can just go to the Toyota dealership and pick up. That makes it pretty unique. Plus, this looks rad as hell. <laughs>